everyone. I'm glad you're here with me today. I did a lot of yelling at cheer practice last night. My voice is very raspy today. And you know what occurred to me as I was putting my skincare on? You all are the first people I talk to every day. So I don't have a lot of vocal warm up, except what I say to the kittens in the morning. But this video, guys, um, talk about something that jumped the line. Like I have actually a list of things I'm prepared and ready to do a video on and this just this idea swooped in the other day and I thought I gotta do that so my thought was as I walk through like the aisles of let's say Walmart I feel like I look around and I've tried so much of what's there and I sometimes get the feeling like I've tried everything and then I thought there's no way, you know, like really look it over. I'm sure there's stuff you haven't tried. And yes, there there are some things. I was able to find a full face of things from Walmart that I haven't tried. And I'm not just talking like, oh, from a special limited edition holiday display or like, you know, looking at the new stuff at Ulta. Well, maybe you could find a bunch of new things you'd never tried. But these are things that just are, you know, part of that regular display, just lurking in there, different places, different brands. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm going ahead and trying them today. When you feel like you tried everything, there's always a few more. So thank you for being with me. My skincare is already on and um, I found a primer there where I was like, how long has this been just hanging out here? This was right within the regular line of CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skincare Color Correcting Serum Moisturizer Primer. Total brightener, this says, for sensitive skin. So this says for light skin tones and then there were several other like tone options you could get. So let's open this up. Yes, this is gonna be kind of a fun, like just trying it out type of video. Ooh, luck glass bottle. Obviously not like a full review kind of video, but I think we'll get the idea on some things. So we're going to use this like a little priming step. Um, let's pump some out. Okay, has that light pinky look to it as we blend it into the skin. Can you see that? Oh, it does feel like it's adding some nice hydration. Did it brighten? What do you think? I like that level of moisture in a primer. It doesn't feel too heavy. There was enough like kind of slip across the skin where I'm thinking, okay, this didn't add like a whole other exact layer of moisturizer, but a little additional moisture is definitely in that. I'll have to like pop up a before and after of my face when I started the video to after I put this on and we can see, did it really do some color correcting, but it's supposed to be brightening. That's what this one's function is. Okay, foundations. Looking around at all the different foundations, I felt like I'd tried everything, but then lo and behold, in the Relove by Revolution line, this is now sold at my Walmart store and everything's $5 or less. I found this super matte foundation and it's two-in-one foundation and concealer, full coverage. I got the shade F4. I found the one that hadn't been cracked open yet. I can tell by the seal and I'm like, yes, this is mine. Hopefully this shade is right. I'm worried it's going to be maybe a little light. We'll see. There is no pump here. That's okay. We can deal with that because I bought this for like, I want to say $4.99 or something. Okay. I'm worried it is going to be a little on the light side, but we'll just spot it around. And I've got this beauty blender because I thought when it says full coverage matte, I'm, that might be the way I want to work with it. So let's just dab that in and see if we really think we're getting full coverage here. I like a good experimental video, you know, experimenting with you. Yeah, I literally went to Walmart. I was going to do it in a delivery order, but sometimes like they'll replace things that I maybe didn't want replaced or they won't notice that something has been compromised, you know? So I thought I'll just go there and do it myself. So me and Bubba went, got him a little monster truck, and then I went about my business. He loves monster trucks. I come home from cheerleading last night and he and Bubba are watching monster trucks on TV and Bub's like, you know, I really need to go watch one of these things. This is amazing. Okay. This is blended in. Granted, I did use the Beauty Blender, which can knock down the coverage somewhat, but this is looking like a straight up medium coverage to me. And it's definitely not making me feel like it could be concealer and foundation in one. Here's what I'm gonna do, a little bit of building. I don't wanna build too much because again, the shade is possibly a little light, but I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna take to it with a brush. I'm also very proud of myself because I washed all my brushes yesterday, yay but I forgot about my sponges. <laughs> so I'll do that today, hopefully. I'm gonna try pressing this in. Okay, definitely building the coverage a little more, but I still, I, I question the full coverage nature of this. I'm getting it around the eyes, seeing if I feel like that's concealer. Like I'm never gonna feel like any foundation that claims to be foundation and concealer is really doing that. I know the fullest coverage version of Estee Lauder Double Wear, the Estee Lauder Double Wear Max Cover, 
that is true concealer optional skin. Mm, yeah. Even with a brush and even building on a second layer, I still don't really feel like this is a full coverage foundation. Just saying. I don't think it's terrible, and I also feel like it's not like a matte cakey look, um, and part of that might be because we threw on some definite extra hydration with this primer, and it looks like the skin actually has a decent glow. Not by way of shimmer, but just the moisture in my skin right now. So things are looking okay. Um, I think we made the shade work well enough. I just don't think it's full coverage. I found a concealer I hadn't used before, and it's this one from CoverGirl. It's the Simply Ageless Triple Action Concealer, and it says it's going to depuff, conceal, and care. Well, I hope it listens to me and all my issues while I do this. 305 Ivory is the shade I got. I just went for the lightest one, because for some reason in the lighting of Walmart, they all seemed dark. Oh, here's how it's going to care. The formula is infused with hyaluronic complex, vitamin C, and niacinamide. That's everything you look for in a friend. Formula instantly reduces the appearance of wrinkles and hydrates for a more youthful looking wide awake look. And the wand, look at the wand. That ain't no puffy doe foot. Cooling ceramic wand for an instant cold effect. Lightweight, medium to full coverage, radiant finish. And we've got this little sub cap here. Oh dear. Please, let's not have this be a pliers need. Okay, so we're now putting our little ceramic wand down into this stuff. And it's like, are you going to rub this on your skin enough to get a distinct cooling effect? It does feel cooling. I got to give it that. But how much rubbing are you going to do? Like, are we just going to go with concealer? I've already got foundation on. I don't want to. It feels very splotchy, my approach. But let's just go with it. The stuff wears off the applicator so dang fast. And then I got a zit I'm trying to trying to work with there. I put a pimple patch on that last night. It's one of those that feels like it's going to be an absolute mountain. Yeah. So we'll put some of this on there. I don't think I want the sponge for this. I'm going to take my e.l.f. duo brush and see if we can kind of maximize what's going on here. I like that they tried something different on that applicator. And it really did feel cooling. Only thing is, like, how much advantage do you get out of it when you're just sw taking a swipe past? And this was a little more expensive than your average drugstore concealer. I want to say it was like maybe 14 bucks. Yeah. Okay, it's been applied. Um, the shade is a little brightening, I think. I'm not feeling full coverage at all. But I think it helped the look somewhat. Feels really dewy on my under eye right now. Skin as a whole looks pretty good. I mean, these coverage products haven't been non-existent. They have been at least a true medium. I want to see that exact cost on that concealer for you, though. Because I hesitated. I'm like, Ooh, do I want to do that? It's funny. For a certain eye palette that's high end, I might be like, okay, I need that. But then for a $14 drugstore concealer, I'm really stepping back. How do I find it? My items? It's not milk and it's not cheese. Purchase history. This was $14.98, okay? This was $14.98. This was $12.97. But I think it had a higher price tag on the thing, so I, I must have saved a couple bucks there without really realizing it. I've got some expensive drugstore things coming up. I've got a contour that's nine, a mascara that's $9.98, a highlighter that's $9.96, and a lip color that is $11.96. I didn't even assume it was that much. The monster truck was $3.97. We're all blended in. Even after having a couple of minutes there to sit, it still does feel pretty tacky. I am going to want to set this. Um, the powder I found that I'd never used is the CoverGirl Clean Matte. I kind of wanted to see how this might compare to like a Rimmel Stay Matte. It's in Buff Beige. Uh, press powder, oil control. I feel like I generally define my skin as being normal, but I can get a little oily because I, I can also get a little sweaty. Comes with the little puff. I might just save that for my kitten's kitten. I got a powder puff. And here's what our compact looks like. I like that cute light blue packaging. Um, powder feels smooth. Feels like it's going to have some coverage. Do I want to go at my under eyes just straight away with this? Because I don't have a loose powder. There was no loose powder there that I had not yet used. Let's use like a little brush like this. This is my Profusion PD5. It comes in a three pack along with the foundation brush. And I'm just going to take a little lighter approach here. Just because sometimes you're not sure what's going to make you look dim on the under eye and what's really going to brighten, especially when you're just going for a random skin tone color. So I'm buffing this around there. 
I'm going to hit the T-zone with it. I feel like just the way I see it on my nose right now, I would say don't go overboard with this powder. And maybe after it would sink in on your skin just a little bit, it'd be a different story, but freshly applied, I just get that sense that you wouldn't want to go too far with this. It is really matte. I just want to make sure I'm getting that under eye set so it'll last all day. Okay, I'm feeling set, but not too dry. That's, that's good. I might just do a light bit of this elsewhere on the skin, just to be sure we're all set. Because that CoverGirl primer really did add some extra moisture. Just dabbing, very light dabs. You know something I've most definitely held off on talking about on my channel are these little wands from e.l.f. Um, there's a couple reasons why. The packaging, like the Charlotte Tilbury where it squeezes out the puffy tip and I always feel like that turns out to be a little messy and blah blah blah. But also the price, like I'm turned off by the nine dollars for this. And I feel like this is just such a big deviation from where e.l.f. came from. You're talking to a person whose first video on YouTube was on the one dollar e.l.f. brushes. Yes, they were a dollar. So I got the medium tan shade in this Halo Glow Beauty Wand for contour. Milani makes a good one of these too with the same packaging flaw, but like it's good. It works and it blends well. So let's see if we like this. The product is approaching the tip. There it is. So we'll dot this on. Oh, it's, it's extremely dark. Let's just stop there and start blending. This is my Sephora 56. Okay, so obviously she shears out. I may have gotten a bit much on there. <laughs> they were small dots, but they were thick dots. Overall, the tone is good. Like, the way this is sheared out is fine. <laughs> just watch it. Okay, noted. I'm going to do some little dots here without too much pressure. Right in there. Yeah, I have no complaints about the way this is blending in, especially for looking as dark as it does when you do the dots. And this is just medium, medium tan. I could have gone lighter, but I just, I didn't want to risk getting one I couldn't see on my skin. I just wasn't sure what the formula was going to be like. I look a little chiseled there. Yes. You know, I had after practice last night, one of those Taco Bell power menu bowls. So good. Like you feel like you're being kind of healthy because you're just getting it in the bowl. You're beans, give you a little rice, basically all the taco toppings, but it's just in a bowl. It's good. Hi kitten. You want this? Do you want this little powder puff? I just bestowed upon her the smaller powder puff, but it's not nearly as puffy as the other. I don't know whether she will accept or reject. She's sniffing it out. Just like I told you guys, see that other powder puff right there? That's the one she brought in in her mouth. Right there. That's her powder puff. She left it at the door because she was planning to be here. Okay. There's the new one. She's not sure about it yet. I think I need a bit more on this side. I like that. I like it. I cannot complain. I, I really feel like it did a good job. I still think I prefer the hard candy face off in sweet tea, but this did what I wanted it to do and it did it with ease. Now the cap, did they make the cap big enough to not rub on the I think it is big enough. I don't think it rubbed on the puffy tip. Good. We're at peace. What did I get for blush? Well, I was looking at the e.l.f. blushes and they just had one like this of the $3 blushes and it's just called Bright Pink. And I thought, you know, I want to try that one $3 blush that they have, especially because some of this stuff, <laughs> some of this stuff was over 10 at the drugstore. Here we go. Bright pink, it says. It looks like a classic matte. I go into it with my e.l.f. blush brush. Hmm. Is it bright pink? That's a kind of a classic pink, you know, not too warm, not too cool. Definitely has pigment. I think that would be wearable for a lot of people. Um, there is a little powder kick up when I put my brush in. Like it's really pigmented. Oh, she came running in with the other one. Yes, honey. I think she knows what I'm talking about when I'm talking about powder puff. I think she knows those words. She's so sweet. You can sit in the pink chair. So build slowly with this one because I do get the sense that a little goes a long way, which is nice to see out of a $3 blush. I mean, why not? If you wanted to spend the minimal amount, I mean, I think around $3 is probably as minimal as it's gonna get. It's pigmented, it's classic pink, okay? Good, happy with that purchase. Then I got a Revlon Skin Lights Prismatic Highlighter. This was one of those things that was also kind of up there in price. This was $9.96. I've used, I think a Skin Lights bronzer at one point, but yeah, this is the Prismatic Highlighter in Daybreak Glimmer. We broke into it. 
here we go. Can you see it's it's textured and then there's like a ripple in it. Can you tell that? Ooh, smooth shimmer. Could be highly metallic, but smooth, not chunky. Let's go in with our Real Techniques setting brush. Oh my gosh. Satisfying. But wow, I just got a tiny bit on my brush. Just a tiny bit. That whole cheek is just glowing to the gods. I like it. I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. I'm dewy, but I'm not. I just want to put it everywhere. Okay, those are our face steps. I'm really happy. I feel like I just got more and more impressed with the color products. This, I thought, did a good job, the contour wand. Like, I'm, I'm chiseled. This blush for three bucks was really good, and even not for three bucks, just, it's a classic pink blush and it did its job. And this highlighter just rocked it. Love that. Look up close, doesn't look like makeup. Don't know how. These underwhelmed me a little bit, claiming to be a foundation and concealer, claiming to be full coverage. I can immediately tell if it's not measuring up to those claims. This, pricey and gosh it even feels cold. Ew. Did some good things. I think I can still get use out of this but just not in awe. This I will use some more too. I think this will be really good on days when I feel like my skin has been extra dry and I need to add that little extra layer of hydration before makeup. I think that'll be good. This was just average, you know. Could be a good little purse compact, sure. Um, I just wouldn't want to apply a lot of it at once because it is very very matte and I feel like I didn't blend this highlighter. <laughs> so I completely forgot about brows. I forgot to look for anything brow-wise. So we're just gonna go in and pretend that I haven't been using this Revlon Micro for a long time. This is in the shade Medium Brown, and I do really like it. It's as good as any skinny brow pencil. I don't know why I don't think about brows when I'm shopping. I just didn't. Last night was really one of those grinded out practices, especially for the little bit older team. Worked on the same pyramid for pretty much the entire practice, but sometimes that's what it takes, you know? For that age, it was a pretty intricate thing. You absolutely have to get everyone working together on the same page. I'm pretty sure it took every kid. And then I wound up basing it for a while. And when you're basing with a kid who's like this much shorter than you, you have to just be in a perpetual squat. So my quads are gonna feel that later today. <laughs> the girl I'm holding is the tiniest thing in the world, but I'm just holding that squat while everything gets explained and everybody else moves around into their spots. And it's like, ah. All right, so see, we're just getting this brow all filled in. There we go. And I'm gonna use Brow Fast Sculpt from Maybelline, which is one of the best things you can find at the drugstore. Medium brown. The brush, I'm right now using that end that's a little more bristly, you know, not the shorter end that carries more product, but the end that kind of brushes through. And it has such amazing hold. This side of the brush gives you that hold without too much added product. It's amazing. Hope they never change it or do away with it. Kind of fluffed them there. I'm using Milani Eyeshadow Primer. No sense in changing that up, right? And then I found an eye palette from a line of eye palettes that I'd never used. I didn't just want to like pick a new shade of something that was among a range I had experience with. I wanted to try to find an eyeshadow product from Walmart that I'd never used before. So I think I found it and it was from the display of Revolution. Now we all know Emily's fairly familiar with Makeup Revolution, but these particular products I've not used. They have a skinny Revolution display beside the Relove by Revolution display in my Walmart. And they have this Ultimate Nudes set, and I know this is copying Huda because she did light, medium, and dark, and this one's doing that too, and I got the dark because who doesn't want those berry tones? And I own the Huda one, so let's just pause for a second and pop that out. Huda's nude palette is called Rich side by side. Okay, I feel like they tried to really go for the mattes, and the mattes, just at a glance, as I look at them, the mattes look very similar in both. Um, we do have a reddish shade up here. This shade is not as deep as the one in this palette, and down here, this shade looks more plummy than that color right there. That's just my initial impression. Let's see if the quality is good because these shades are soft and pigmented and nice to work with. Let's see what this one does. I'm gonna take my Profusion brush here. Let's go up to this shade. You know we love a matte building and blending experience. And I know Revolution can do some really comparable to high-end shadows. 
they had some of those larger palettes, which I really like from their line. They're not like super huge, but they're like yay big and they've got a bunch of rectangular shades in there. But I'm familiar with that range enough. I didn't want to do that. Okay, so there's that very light shade just starting out. I just want to see how dark she'd go. Now let's move on to the next darkest, this rose in the middle. So far, like, I'm not complaining at all. The texture even seems like Huda. There's minimal fallout. There's minimal dust kicked up when you go into a Huda shadow. There might be a little, but not a lot. And this is the very same experience so far. Soft enough to pick up on the brush, but not so soft that you're overwhelmed. Getting that pink kind of sheared out and merged with the first shade. Let's go deeper. Let's go right below that to this color here deep rose. Like, it's it's not, I don't know, would I call it burgundy? Yeah, I would. Okay, adding some intensity. The texture of the shadow still seems consistent. All of these have performed the same way when I put my brush in. Okay, that's pretty. Yeah, the Revolution section consists of the larger palettes I described, these, and then some little, like, setting powder what do you call them? Tubs? Little mini vats of setting powder with the screw-off lid. I think there might have been some like highlighting pens. It's just a, a very pared down selection of the brand. So there's that. You know we're coming for that plum, that matte plum. We gotta see where that goes. Diving in again with that similar texture that's not too soft. Oh, but she is pigmented. This is like my perfect plum right here. I want to see enough of the purple, but I don't want it to somehow come off lighter. Sometimes dark shades and palettes in matte formulas oddly will come off lighter than you expect, and this is not one of them. It's very true to color, very much what I hoped it would be there. I'm seeing the purple, but yet it is deep enough to make me happy. How much was this? $6.98. This was less than the singular highlighter. This was less than the contour wand, less than the mascara, less than the primer, and I'm getting nine colors. And so far, I'm super happy with it. Look how pretty. If you're a pink and purple and berry shadow lover, this is doing so well. I'm just building a little bit, just making sure I get the shadow in the right spot. You know a new trend I've noticed among kids at school, something that I've seen happening lately? Instead of just bringing a sweet treat for their birthday, they'll like bring pizza for the class or buy Happy Meals for the class. That's happening for the second time today. Biddy's class, like they said, don't bring your lunch or, you know, we're not eating cafeteria lunch today. So-and-so's bringing pizza for their birthday. And I think that's really cool. Okay, so here's where we're at, friends. I can't even identify the brushes because they're not dirty anymore. Isn't that sad? Like, the brush looks like this, but in my collection, uh, I just they, they needed to be washed. I can recognize that. I can recognize right up in here. I just want to see a little more plum coming up. Mats are fun. Okay, somehow I got some fallout here, and I don't know how or why. What's the difference between these two colors? The one on this side looks like that. Okay, so it is kind of a murky berry shimmer. That's a kind of a unique color, the depth in that, but yet the shine. And then the the one I'm swatching right here, they're close, but this is more, more plummy. It's almost like a deep plum taupe and then a deep berry shimmer. And then, of course, we have this one here, which is more like rusty cranberry red. Our other shimmer is light. Oh man, it, I mean the mats were as good as they were and now these shimmers seem to be really promising. Each one of them is smooth, each one is free from dusty sparkle. We are indeed going to get along well here. I'm going to take a flat brush and I'm going to first go to the murky, kind of looked a little bit like a taupey purpley thing. And let's just see how she goes on. Okay, she's going on all right. Um, and for a second there, I thought it wasn't overlapping the matte very well, but these are kind of like a, a creamy feeling shimmer, if you know what I mean. And they don't just dab on and build up the way a standard 
like Huda Shimmer might. Like I feel these are gonna benefit from a swipe and the pressure of your finger applying them. And it's not because they're short on pigment, it's just the feel of the shadow. Like you can maybe get it on with your finger and then blend around a little bit with a brush. And I'm not saying they're like creamy, dewy, sticky, but there's just, there's a difference. Wind is kicking up out there. My little Bubba was such a good, good neighbor yesterday. He was out playing with his lawn equipment and he saw the, a neighbor down the street her trash can had blown over and he's like I can fix it and so he hops on his scooter and I just walk behind him and he scoots down the street we get our trash can picked up and he just scoots right back home he was so happy with himself that he did that and I just thought it was cute that he saw that and thought like there's something I can do I love that that's so pretty can you see the gleam on that shade I, don't know, I hope it's showing. Then I feel we need to go in a little lighter on the inside so we do have a shade for that. This does seem like a traditional shimmer here. Yeah. The champagne is just going to pat on. I like that in the midst of a dark palette we have something like that. Okay, then what do you say we go under the eye with some deep plum? Again, with the small pointed brush. Let's make a whole thing of it. Just making it kind of meet up with that outer extension of shadow. This is so pretty. I'm really happy with that. And then I might pull this in like the way I would use Kosa's Cloud Set. Just a little bit on the tip of my little brush. Go right under that place where I put the shadow just to preventatively like absorb oils. This might be a great powder for this. There we go. Um, I didn't get an eyeliner. I was looking for eyeliners and then I think I got sidetracked and got all into my lip products that I was looking for. So we'll just go linerless for today. And we'll really be able to see the mascara and what this does. This was almost $10. The Lash Sensational Luscious Blackest Black Full Fan Effect Dense Supple Lashes. Some people feel like the regular Lash Sensational is just God's gift to mascara, and I've never really felt that way. But maybe I'll like this take on it. Matte Black Tube. Whoa! Do you see how the cap is not properly on there? I just took it out of the package. Okay, I'm able to twist it down right, but it was like it, it was twisted crooked. Okay, she doesn't look like she's dry at all. I guess that wasn't an issue. Um, very short rubber bristles tapered toward the tip. Okay, we're gonna first need to curl our lashes though. I would love to know if any of the products in this video are like your holy grails. Cause I think it's so cool how in this makeup community, things that can be completely new to someone or someone else is just like, oh my gosh, that's the product I wouldn't be without. First time with a mascara isn't always the best time, but let's see. I got a really good curl on my lashes today. Feels like this mascara is really grabbing them. And I like the tapered tip a lot. I feel like I have a lot of control. This brush doesn't feel oversized. Wow. For one very non-aggressively applied first coat, that looks really good. Like I, I didn't even feel like I was trying that hard, like really getting in there and it looks like the lashes are big. Okay, I can tell that the formula is a little bit wet, so I don't wanna go doing too much at one time. So I'll go back to that eye and try a little more after I do this. The lip color today is gonna be very everyday, I think. <laughs> I think a lot of people are gonna just see this as an everyday basic. Okay, let's do it. Oh, hello, left lashes. This is surprising me. Just immediate, just a few swipes through. I'm gonna go back over to right. Well, I'll be darned. This is really good. This is really like building on itself in a very natural extended way, not looking like, okay, I can see the tips of where the mascara is trying to build on itself. Like it's building nicely. Really, really impressed by that. And I think not having liner on today it's showing it off even more. Let's do a little Cali Ray come hell or high water on the lower lashes. I'm not sure that I've ever used, well, I take it back. They put out some matte lip liners a couple years ago, and I know I used some matte lip liners from L'Oreal, but I've never used just the traditional, I think these are the Color Riche 
lip liners from L'Oreal, so I got one of these, and this is in the shade Au Naturel 780. Has this like been around forever? You know how some of the lipsticks have. Okay, we've got a nice little seemingly retractable liner here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in my whole lips with this, and then we've got a two-step lip product coming. I wouldn't have had to have gotten a liner, but I just, I wanted to try one. Very dusty rose, kind of cool. Think hard candy insta pout in first move. Certainly would be good, like helping a nude lip work, you know. Smooth enough application. Yeah, it's decent. That works for me. And then from NYX, this lip color was more expensive than I thought it was going to be. I just assumed it was going to be like seven bucks or something. It was eleven ninety six. Shine Loud Vegan High Shine Long Lasting liquid lipstick. I've never tried this stuff before, but I assume it's going to be like a CoverGirl Outlast. Um, I think the shade name is Magic Maker. So we have like a clear gloss, and then I guess we've got our long wear lip color. So like I said, with stuff like this, you know, you don't absolutely have to have the lip liner. It's kind of a toasty nude, deep nude. And we're going to go by CoverGirl Outlast rules, which is let it completely dry before you try to put that gloss on top. And also, try not to put too much on. Okay, see that color all over? Seeming pretty true to color right now. Gonna reinforce the curl on my lashes. Like, look! That mascara did such a good job. And the eye palette, too. Like, if you're into these tones, this was so good. And this was $6 and change. They also had the medium, which I want to say it was a little more on the brownish side, and then they have a light as well, just like Huda. But yeah, it's called Lash Sensational Luscious in the Matte Black Tube. That, that was good. But I really also was pleasantly surprised by the highlighter and the blush. I know Elf can do some good things with their blushes, but that one was really good for three bucks. This is certainly not the only product you can get that's like this, you know, the liquid contour type of stuff, but I liked it. But you could go cheaper if you get the hard candy. The Milani is probably around the same price as this, if not more. I feel like the lip color has dried, and does it not look just a little bit darker now as it's set there? I think it looks a little darker. And then we've got this gloss with a brush tip applicator, and we're going to go over everything. If you guys have tried these, do you feel they rank right up there with a the CoverGirl Outlast? Rimmel makes a great two-step thing, but I'm not sure they're sold in stores all the time. Look at that. Shiny. Satisfying my desire to end with shine on the lips almost every day. Nice color. Decent liner, too. Um, you know, not wildly different from other neutral, kind of deepened nude lip colors that I've tried lately. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. This was a ton of fun for me to explore really on purpose, dig out those things from the drugstore that I just hadn't had any experience with yet. I think we found some total gems today that were really, really fun. And by the way, that gloss, it's a little slippery. I was expecting it to be a bit more sticky. I'm not thinking it's going to last super long just with the shine. Like you're going to need to reapply that fairly frequently just because it's not very tacky. Just an observation. Thank you again, my friends. I truly appreciate your time, your kind words, your uh, video suggestions, everything. Just thank you so much, and I'll see you again next time. I love you. Bye.